We at the airport. Just arrived in the States, Desiree have a headache, so I have to be very very careful guys, very careful. <laughs> How do you like New York so far? It's okay. Okay, let's explore more. First day in uh, New York City. Just arrived in Queens. Pretty cool neighborhood. For me it looks like CGI. I was telling this to Daisy Ray while eating because it's the first time that I'm doing an intercontinental flight. Your experience is that it's a very long day. It's always daylight for like over 20 hours and then at the end of the day you are at a place that looks completely different a place that you've seen only in the movies it looks like surreal first coffee in new york first cappuccino this is great how is the cappuccino? Good. A little different than Europe, than I expected, but it's not bad. Definitely good. Sunday morning in New York, Long Island, Queens, Hunter Street. Today is the 18th of September and we're going towards Manhattan to see the real deal skyscrapers in downtown. <laughs> this is the plan. And uh, let's go check it out. If you're coming to New York, remember it's very important. You buy a Metro card and you pick unlimited rides. The weekly choice if you're staying for a week because you're gonna save money. And we didn't do that yesterday, we did it today. But better late than never. And we're now going to the World Trade Center. Everything in New York is built out of steel. Even the subway, everywhere you have steel. We got at the World Trade Center station. The American flags around the city are half mast, so we suppose it's because they're commemorating 9-11. 9-11 never forget. We will never forget. That was a shocker for the whole world, not only for New York City. You can see the new performance center from Rex Architects. And then here up, it's Tower One. We came in a very funny time of the day because it's reflecting the sunlight and here is the Pala Travel Station. This is the new setup of the World Trade Center. We have the one World Trade Center which is the tower. Then we have the second World Trade Center which is under construction I guess. The Oculus which is this memorial and we have Tower 3, Tower 4, Tower 5. They look like gardens around this park where is the 9-11 memorial where we're going right now. We are arriving at the pools. I'm not sure if they're in the exact same position where the towers were. But we can see a lot of people gathering. There are still, still a lot of flowers. Uh, all the names of the victims that died here. I think approximately 5,000 people are here and they will stay forever. We're now going to the top of the One World Trade Center. We have done the fastest elevator in the Western Hemisphere and you feel a little stun afterwards. Here we are at the top of the observatory. You can see in the distance there is the Statue of Liberty, which back in the days immigrants were used to see when arriving with ships from Europe. And then they were sorted in the island next to it. Alice Island is the island. On the other side, what we're seeing over there, it's New Jersey. Here we can see Lower Manhattan. 
Brooklyn Bridge. We can see the other towers. I think those are the four and the five. We can see the Liberty Park from the top. From here you can see the Oculus. It's down there. We can see the Empire State Building and uh, all this series of super slender new towers that can be seen here. We are leaving One World Trade Center. It was pretty cool as you have seen from the top. Now we are exploring the rest of Lower Manhattan. It's very big, it's huge. Like everything looks close because the buildings are super tall, but they're far away, very far away. So let's check out what is the next uh, destination. Probably we're gonna go down in the Oculus and take an underground and see how to get to Wall Street. Here we are on the other side of the Oculus from Calatrava. You can see this is the main subway station here. Looks quite interesting. And there is the 9 11 Museum by Snow Heta. The Oculus, you can see. There's a very interesting structure by Santiago Calatrava. You can see how beautiful the lights illuminate uh, the space. And this uh, Oculus of Light moves according to the sunlight and on 11.9 illuminates the center, I think, as a commemoration of the terror attack on the towers. The Oculus is a shopping center, there is an Apple store, you can see that uh, it's crucial stations for the New York subway, a lot of lines cross here. We are now approaching Wall Street. We're looking for the famous statue of the bull which represents the strong American economy. Here on Wall Street there is also the Trump building. It's not the tower, this is just the building. They're walking for several minutes in the wrong direction. We finally got to the statue. There is a line to get a picture and it's a total mayhem. Hi! Say hi to TCI Podcast! Hey! Hola! After that bummer at the bull statue, we got some sap sandwiches and we're going into a park from which we can see in the distance the Statue of Liberty. So here we are at the Liberty Statue. You see it? You see it? This is the Liberty Statue. No, it's not. It's on the other side. I'm gonna show you. It's right there on the horizon. Liberty, freedom in the United States of America. We are walking back on Broadway towards Manhattan. Here we have the School of Film and Acting. For sure I'll need a little bit of film lessons because I'm not so good yet. It's probably very expensive though. Here we are. We arrive on Broadway and this is the American Institute of Architects, AIA. Uh, was founded here February 23rd, 1857 by 13 architects of ideas and visions. This is for only architects here in the States, the American Institute of Architects. It's right on Broadway next to Trinity Church. So yeah, architects all over the place. New York is a new Amsterdam. It's full of coffee shops with coffee and weed. You can get very very high in this city without any problem. We are at Broadway 368. Uh, this is the famous Casey Neistat studio. Uh, if you don't know Casey Neistat, go check his vlogs. Very famous New York filmmaker, vlogger. Definitely very cool guy, very cool YouTuber. If you like him, it's definitely worth it to come and visit his studio. It's in a very interesting part of Broadway. We are walking in the middle of Soho. 
Soho so far say, has been the most uh, European neighborhood. Up to six story buildings with a lot of cool shops, people selling stuff on the street, galleries. Pretty cool. I suggest to visit Soho. And then uh, in front of the Casey Neistat studio, we had uh, a conversation with a guy that also uh, works there. He is a uh, writer. He writes for magazines and plays. And he told us that Tribeca is also currently uh, really blowing. It's like uh, great. A lot of art, artists move there. Brooklyn is very artisty and designery. So I'm gonna check that in the next days. In the distance, guys, you can see the. New York Times skyscraper by Renzo Piano and uh, now we are walking towards the High Line in order to be more precise we are walking on through Chelsea so on the 16th street we are walking on now you can find the SVA School of Visual Arts New York and on the other side of the street there is the Atlantic Acting, Acting School so also a lot of schools for visual art for acting there were a lot there are a lot of design shops also a very creative neighborhood chelsea really suggest uh, to visit it too so also this is the meat packers area we have makers drive in the meat packers district in another flag there was written creatives also in front of us there is one with creative so the meat packing district it's uh the place to go for creative and of course the creative insider went and showed you the only little thing that you can do in exchange it's to click that like button and subscribe to the channel we got under the high line right uh, on the bottom of this uh, Bjorke Ingels project the first one that we're seeing in New York so let's get on top and see what we can see here we are right on top of the high line we have Bjorke Ingels project right behind us and also the Heatherwick studio so we're gonna be checking around we're also very close to the vessel very green as you can see and we're going to the direction uh, of, of this new settlement here designed by a big and Heatherwick studio feels also very well built. Here we have the typical high line sort of cuts in the floor and everything is turning green. It looks awesome. You can see this massive concrete pavement which feels very good when you're walking on. Pretty solid and the first PIG project passing right in between the Heatherwick buildings. They're connected with this fun bridge that goes below the bridge all the up, up there. So I guess it's some sort of corridor. And you can see how beautiful is the view from the High Line walking towards Manhattan. There you can see there is the building called The Edge with that edge on the top and it has a cut off so you can go visit that panorama deck and I think living in the Heatherwick buildings must be very nice and very very expensive you can see that the greenery is so so much it feels really like you're on, on a, in a park it feels like we are on a elevated forest here another very interesting facade out of metal. I'm expecting to see the spiral from Big soon. Here some art tornado installation. We are getting closer and closer to the buildings downtown. So we decided to take a, a little break. Uh, I, I was saying the High Line is the most non-American thing made in America. It's something extremely cool. And uh, you can see the spots where you can take a rest have this view, which is pretty awesome. And uh, the fact that the streets are straight is not bad at all. And then you can see all these different skyscrapers, these buildings from different ages, from different moments in which the city was built. Here we are, we arrived at the Zahahadid. Luxury condos right along the High Line. 
you can definitely recognize it's uh, the Hadid building. Let me know in the comments what do you think about the Zahadid condo. I'm sorry I cannot zoom out more but uh, I have my camera stabilization on so it's, it zooms further in. Definitely a very cool condo and I guess uh, probably very hard to afford. <laughs> we are moving towards the area of the vessel. I think it's called Hudson Yards. I'm not sure. Uh, here. Very interesting skyscraper, high rise, a lot of high rises. Guys, I, I don't remember who did this architecture here with uh, cushions, but look at what, like, this is a, an extremely big steel structure that it's holding and open. You can see that it's basically as tall as, I don't know, half a person. It's like around a meter of diameter of pure steel, very big, and then there is the skyscraper connected to it. All the skyscrapers are so tall, but you get used to it, so they don't look so... I don't know, they're not so massive as I would imagine. Copped on on the High Line uh, in Chelsea, and we arrived uh, more or less at the end of it, where it arrives on the water. And you can see on the other side, New Jersey, in this uh, amazing light. There, in between the buildings, you see the spiral. From this last part of the High Line, you can see also the whole new district with the vessel in the middle. But you can clearly see the concept of the High Line going up around the, the tower so that the office spaces will have a piece of a high line right in front of them even if you work from the some of the top floors as usual uh, Bjork Ingels likes to play with this uh, suspended suspended gardens it's a very beautiful concept uh, we've seen some of those uh, in Copenhagen that are even from the early stages of uh, the office when he was still working at Plot together with Julian de Schmidt, but here we can see the latest architecture that big, it's also quite spectacular and you can see it in its full beauty. We got really close. So we finally arrived at the vessel, as you see there are no people on top of it, so I don't think we'll be able to get on top of it. It looks cool. And as you can see here, a lot of people with serious money. Those are Pontiacs, I think. If you have ever watched the, the show Ozark, those are like the, the cars of the Mexican cartel. You gotta get your money right, as uh, Kanye West would say. Uh, so guys, Desiree say we need one of those um, Escalades or whatever they're called. So in order to us to get those you have to subscribe to the channel so that we finally get some serious money from YouTube and we can uh, come over and uh, conquer New York City. We are walking towards our next destination which will be clearly by night or at least uh, dark. Now it's around 7 p.m. Probably the last sightseeing from, for tonight and then we're gonna figure out something to eat and going back to the hotel to rest for tomorrow because as I said tomorrow we have also an interesting surprise for you in the afternoon cool experience I think something uh, special through our podcast guests and through our work with the podcast we've got some uh, special invitation for you and we're gonna show you other stuff as an insider from the inside this is almost the last thing we're gonna visit today so stay till the end because it's gonna be, I don't know, I hope as cool as the High Line. There is a specific reason why we're going when it's dark, has been planned. So you can see those typical beautiful New York uh, loft office spaces with the uh, continuous windows, very high ceilings. These are the offices of Peloton, as you can see. And uh, right there in the back, here we go with a New Yorker sign. It has to be repaired a little bit for sure. It's not light, light up really correctly. Here you can see the entrance of the New Yorker building. 
this is the entrance of the famous magazine. Here guys you can see also the Empire State Building in the distance. It looks uh, really nice, illuminated by night. So we arrive at the last point, uh, the last spot of uh, today's vlog. As you can see, it's night but it feels like it's day. It's ultra illuminated. It's Times Square. Here with this view you can see it better. This is Times Square by night. It's a real chaos. Also here it smells like weed everywhere. Which is a little bit annoying. But it's crazy. You cannot really focus on one sign because they're all so bright and all so many and like super HD screens and so on. But yeah, and also you can see at the top there is the number of the year and we are here 2022. Probably they change every year. In Times Square, extremely illuminated. And we're back for you on work tomorrow. But this is it for today. So this is it for the first day in New York as an architect. We hope you enjoy and tomorrow we'll come back with more.